Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I mean over the top beautiful day, here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here. It is Wednesday, December 8th, 2021, something like that, and uh, heading to another 80 degree day here in the Point Lonesome Swamp in the Oasis of Freedom. So I uh, got to figure <coughs> figure out what I want to do with this gorgeous day. But uh, while I'm figuring that out, I'm going to do what I do pretty much every day, and that's chronicle the collapse of a planet for the tiny few people on the planet who have any interest in the subject of the biggest story ever to confront humanity in our history as a species and uh, it's like I didn't have any doomsday sermons for Sunday and now I'm getting a, a boatload of them and I want to thank my <clears throat> fellow depressed collapsitarian Dave Gardner over there at Growth Busters. I have interviewed Dave Gardner about his spin on our predicament and uh, so I'm on his occasional newsletter blog so uh, I'm gonna let you go get some squirrelies like that uh, Dave has sent me two <clears throat> excellent doomsday sermons so I think uh, we're gonna split these up and uh, so I am thrilled to see that Dave has found this essay, this excellent essay in this group called Population Matters uh, by none other than one of my favorite interviewees <coughs> I've had on Collapse Chronicles, and that's Professor William <coughs> Reese, or Bill Reese as you as he's sometimes known. If you haven't heard my interview with William Reese go out there and check this out, but uh, <clears throat> William is, uh, well, Dave has found this essay that William wrote for Population Matters with his spin on COP26. <clears throat> that just came out a few days ago. So this is what someone with a brain, a, uh, an ecologist, has to say about that. So the preface to this, this is dated November 24th. <clears throat> Was COP26 a big waste of time? Population ecologist and population matters expert advisor Professor William Reese weighs in on the major UN climate conference and points out humanity's collective failure to acknowledge and address the root cause of environmental problems. We are consuming more than the earth can provide. Take it away population ecologist William Reese. <clears throat> it is a great irony, if not a tragedy, that so many well-intentioned people, especially climate-focused non-governmental organizations and ordinary citizens, wasted so much time and effort at COP26 in Glasgow. It's not that the official negotiations achieved so little, but rather that climate change is not the real existential threat. Overshoot is. Thank you, Bill Reese, sounding a lot like a uh, book hermit. One more time, climate change is not the real existential threat overshoot is. 
overshoot occurs when people use energy and biological resources faster than ecosystems can regenerate and pollute beyond nature's assimilative capacity. Meaning people pollute beyond nature's assimilative capacity. It is a meta problem, the cause of most so-called environmental problems, including climate change. Thank you, Bill Reese. One more time. Climate change is one subset of overshoot. One of at least nine. And I would say that I've always thought there's a hell of a lot more than nine planetary boundaries. Climate change is one subset of what is going on on this planet. It might get 95% of the coverage, but without climate change anywhere in the pack, the planet is still going down the toilet because there are too many people eating too much stuff. Anyway, I see I'm getting off track again. Let's get back to uh, Bill. Where were we? Uh, <clears throat> overshoot. You know, the real existential threat. <coughs> overshoot means that we modern humans are consuming, polluting, and destroying the biophysical basis of our own existence. It follows that overshoot is ultimately a fatal condition. <clears throat> Nevertheless, the COP delegates in Glasgow did not even acknowledge overshoot or its consequences and implications. One has to wonder whether this is out of ignorance. It's hard to imagine that so many government scientists and advisors are unaware of overshoot or deliberate deception. Climate change as distraction to ensure the public remain unaware of the real threat. Climate change slash global warming is merely one important symptom of overshoot. Climate change is a massive waste management problem. Carbon dioxide is the largest entropic waste by weight of industrial economies. <clears throat> proposed solutions, proposed solutions and mainstream attempts to solve climate change, including the Green New Deal, require massive investment in high-tech non-solutions, including so-called renewable electricity and unproved carbon capture and storage technologies. This approach will not reverse global warming and will worsen overshoot. Modern so-called renewable energy carriers mostly wind turbines and solar panels and solar photovoltaic electricity, but also now hydrogen, face major technical difficulties, including possible materials scarcity. They require massive increases in mining and refining involving fossil fuels toxic waste, and slave child labor. They are ecologically and socially harmful. They must overcome major distribution bottlenecks. They occupy more space than many countries have available 
and they are impossible to scale up in a climate relevant time frame. Renewables are also not actually renewable, merely replaceable. 50 to 20 year working lifespan for wind turbines, 20 to 30 for solar panels. <clears throat> grid scale. Grid scale solar power and more northern latitudes like Canada, much of Europe and Russia is incapable of generating sufficient energy to run society. <clears throat> A major limitation is that capacity factors energy actually delivered compared to name plate capacity are often less than 10 percent and the life cycle energy return on energy invested is less than three to one. <clears throat> Wind is similarly unreliable in many locations. Solar and wind together cannot quantitatively replace fossil fuels. <clears throat> In addition, wind turbines, solar panels, and related infrastructure, as well as electric vehicles and all other machinery and equipment that would have to be electrified and replaced are still manufactured using mainly fossil fuels. Even if it were viable, we cannot make the transition to carbon-free energy without fossil fuels, and this alone would soak up much of any remaining carbon budget, and some climate scientists say there is none, meaning there is already no remaining carbon budget. <clears throat> proponents, I guess he means proponents of all of this greenwashing crap, should do some math. Okay, <clears throat> to replace 50 percent of global fossil fuel, fuel use with electricity by 2030 would require that the world construct approximately 1.2 times the entire present cumulative global stock of wind farms and solar panels every year for the next nine years. And this assumes one unit of electricity is equivalent to 2.7 units of fossil energy. That hard to electrify applications will become easy to electrify and that there will be no growth in demand <clears throat> or mineral supply problems. All this in a world expecting two billion more people and a 50 percent increase in demand for energy by 2050. This scenario cannot happen. One more time, this scenario cannot happen. <clears throat> It is an impossibility theorem, which is a good thing because if industrial humans do acquire another abundant cheap source of energy, they will use it to continue consuming, polluting, and wrecking our planet. Thank you, William Reese, for digging to the ultimate lie of this. The only thing that we're going to get by, by some magic bullet that we actually figure this out 
is a quickening of the pace of the wreckage and destruction of planet Earth. This free energy that, that, that all of these clueless morons keep talking about, it will, it, 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 it will accelerate the pace of the collapse of a planet. Uh, you know, as I have said, it is the inefficiency of even fossil fuels is, is the only reason we still have as much of this planet left as we have. The last thing this planet needs is, is a never-ending source of clean, uh, free energy. It would be the final death blow to this planet. Thank you, uh, Professor William Reese, for pointing this out to the clueless morons right here in the Doomosphere that, that keep on cheering on uh, this, uh, uh, other than me and Andy the Gardener and, and now William Reese. I, are we the three people on the planet who get it? The last thing this planet needs is to get rid of fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are saving the planet. While such unpleasantries could be avoided on our present course, chaotic collapse is inevitable. Yes, on our present course, chaotic collapse is inevitable. This implies the need to negotiate a major changes in consumer lifestyle involving a 40% reduction globally in energy and material consumption per person. Make that 80% per capita reduction in high income countries. Okay? Never gonna happen. B, more equitable sharing of global biocapacity and economic output. Never going to happen. C, a global population strategy to enable a smooth, socially just descent to the one to two billion people that could live comfortably indefinitely without destroying the ecosphere. Never going to happen. Now, it might happen that uh, we are going to uh, reduce this planet from 8 billion to 1 to 2 billion. Uh, you, you, you know, that could happen, but it ain't going to happen in, what did he call it, a, uh, a socially, a, a smooth, socially just descent. It is going to be a, a catastrophic collapse uh, of everything, uh, assuming we don't go all the way to zero like we need to, uh, but there is going to be nothing, nothing smooth or socially just about it, as William Reese knows. The overall goal needs to be a smaller, steady state, global economy and society of fewer people living more equitably and securely within the biophysical means of nature. Unfortunately, lifestyle changes and population policies remain taboo subjects, and this explains why the official 
COP delegates in Glasgow did not acknowledge overshoot, its consequences, or its implications, and why the human predicament can only worsen in the years ahead. Thank you. Uh, so who is William Reese again? If you have not heard my interview with William Reese, I'll try to remember to put the, uh, the link to, uh, to that interview. I consider it one of my best interviews. Uh, so who is William Reese? <clears throat> William Reese is a population ecologist, ecological economist, Professor Emeritus, and former director of the University of British Columbia's School of Community and Regional Planning. He is a founding member and former president of the Canadian Society for Ecological Economics, a founding director of the One Earth Initiative and a fellow of the Post Carbon Institute. Professor Reese's research focuses on the biophysical requirements for sustainability and the policy implications of global ecological trends. He is perhaps best known as the originator and co-developer with his graduate students of the ecological footprint analysis, which shows that the human enterprise is already an ecological overshoot and that the world would need 4.4 Earth-like planets to support just the present world population at Canadian material standards. Such findings led to a special focus on cities as particularly vulnerable components of the human ecosystem and on psychocognitive barriers to ecologically rational behavior and policy. Professor Reese has authored hundreds of peer-reviewed and popular articles on these and related topics. And he is not a clueless moron, and you might have noticed there was no hopium anywhere. I love a, an honest article uh, ending uh, the human predicament can only worsen in the years ahead, which is why this human is going to get out there and enjoy this absolutely gorgeous day here in paradise while he still can before the human predicament goes completely down the toilet and uh, everybody else's predicament. So I suggest you get out there and enjoy it while you still can before your predicament worsens. Oh uh, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow with a uh, with another excellent analysis of overshoot. Uh, but we're gonna say amen, Brother Bill Reese. My guys. <laughs>